Hello everyone. So now we're ready to go back to our running example and see or confirm that our operational semantics, our evaluation, the rules as I uh, show them to you, work on our running example where we have a function being defined uh, after or before, sorry, a, a variable is declared. So this is the running example. Function is defined first, and then we define the variable a, and function b refers to a. Now we want to see why does this work. So what I'm going to show you is separated by this three dashes. Uh, so above, you're going to see this is going to represent your heap. And on the left hand side, it's going to represent the handles. So the keys and the values on the right hand side will be the environment, sorry, the, um, the variables, the, the pairs, variables and values, right, that are accessible. Some of the, we call these frames, uh, and some of these frames, and we call this environment. Um, and an environment will be no more than a sequence of frames, where one frame points to the next and points to the next. It will become more clear now and also in our future, uh, in our next lecture, where we'll cover the data structure of environments in more detail. So, in this case, we have the environment, the initial environment, and um, these represent these two represent the input of our evaluation function. So the evaluation function, as you know, takes a term and takes an environment, but also takes a heap, as we saw. I mean, it was explicit here, right? Takes a heap, takes a term, and takes an environment. So that's what we're going to see in our example. First, I'm showing you the heap and then the environment, and then the term, okay? So the order is kind of reverse, but for the sake of presentation, kind of makes more sense this way. Okay, so now what I would like you to do is, if you have these three things, which rules should you apply so that you can perform evaluation? So please pause the video and try to answer that. Again, try to look at these rules here. Uh, use the rule sheet to answer your question. So you should be saying, figuring out which rules you have to apply here, and the rules are going to reflect the various cases of your recursive function that you'll be implementing for your homework. So in this case, if we have a define, we can only ap apply one rule, uh, which is the rule for e define, right? Oh, let me go back. So it represents this rule. It's the one. And then you have to evaluate this expression, which in this case is going to be a lambda. So you have to evaluate e lamb. And that's what we have here. So first, we've, we our input is E0, right? Because that's the environment that we start with. Uh, and when you have an evaluation of a lambda, what that does is simply capturing the environment E0. So that's what you have here. That's what we see here. So E0, again, is the pointer or the reference. An environment is a reference to uh, what you see on the right-hand side which in this case starts with em being empty. Okay, so the output is going to be the value void, as before, and now uh, an environment, and we're also showing the, basically, sorry, this, this, this first part here is going to be your heap as well. So these are the two things we have to do. We evaluate the expression in the body, which in this case is a lambda, and secondly, we will uh, mutate the heap so that we now... Oh, sorry, the environment zero. But yeah, we are in, m mutating the heap, uh, but in particular, we're mutating environment E0, and we're adding this B to it. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Notice that there is a circular dependency here, right? Where the closure E0 is pointing to the closure upon creation, and that's normal and what happens. And the reason why we couldn't do it as we were doing before. Okay, so now in our step two, um, what we have is, well, the environment or the heap that we just showed you before. The environment, um, the input environment is E0 still. And the new term that we're evaluating is define A. So try to do it by yourselves. Please pause the video. Um, and then I'm going to continue. Okay, so the output is going to be 
what you see here in the bottom. We apply the rule for E definition. Uh, here we're applying the rule for E val, or the value, because this is a, a value, just return that. The side effect of validating a value is nothing, so it returns the same heap. Uh, and then we take that heap and we update, um, or we put on A, position 20. That's why you have this here. Okay, so you have the two keys. This is the updated heap, right? And the updated environment. So environment E0 is now has two binders. Okay, result is void, as we said before, so everything is fine. Okay, final step is this expression um, calling function B. So tr please pause the video and try to do it yourself. Okay, I'm going to assume you pause the video, and the solution is 20, as we expected, right? Uh, but now notice that we now have a new environment, okay? And this is the important bit. So let's see this step by step. When we have the evaluation of B, what you will see doesn't fit here, but you would have to evaluate the rule E var for the evaluation of the, the variable, right? Which would then look up E0, that's the input environment, E0. And it returns the evaluation of B, which is this closure. Closure appears here, right? And then we're gonna use um, the heap, so far, same heap, pass it to the second one. Nothing changed in this heap, right, at this point. But now when we pass it to the triangle, we have uh, a number. Again, we apply rule eval. Result is, val is the same number. Same heap. That's what B is passed here. Here what we're doing is a pop. What pop pushes, sorry, what push. Push, what push does is creates a new environment, E1 in this case, right? E1 results from every binders in E0 plus um, the new binder Y1. That's what you see here. So we have to update our heap to represent uh, our push, our new uh, environment. You'll see the notation that we start with the parent uh, environment. So environment E1 is linked to E0. So it kind of works like a linked list, if you will, uh, where you can have multiple uh, key value pairs here. Okay, so in this case, we've updated Y assigned to one, and finally, we evaluated A, and we're using E1, okay? So if you remember, um, we need to apply the rule var. And if you apply the rule var, what you will notice is that in E1, A is not defined here, but you should continue through E0, and A is defined here, and therefore you return. So looking up in an environment has to go through its parent environment, which is why you return uh, A assigned to 20, and why this 20 appears here. Okay, I hope this is clear. This is a crucial slide to understand. Okay, so now let's look at another example. I want to show you this function where I'm just returning f of x, and what f of x does, it stores it's the factory, right? You remember that one? It returns a function that when called, returns x. So if I pass f to 10, I'm creating a lambda that when called returns 10. So if the input is this, let's say an empty heap starts with E0, let's see what happens when I evaluate it. Please pause the video and try to answer it yourself. And if not, it's gonna be very simple. The only thing we have to do is we evaluate the closure and it points to the environment itself, and it's the lambda just as that we had. Result is always, the value is always void, so nothing too surprising here. And the evaluation is just this rule, um, where we see, where we assign um, to environment E0, F. And this lambda X is this lambda, and this lambda Y is this lambda X is here. Okay. So next, let's look at this example. What we're going to do is we're going to call f with 10, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to call f and we're going to pass 10. 
So that is just returning the closure, right? We want to return the closure that is capturing 10. And now it's where the interesting part happens. So if you look at this slide, you will notice that what happens is when you evaluate it, you get the new environment E1, which results from calling, right? And E1 is whatever you got by calling uh, this lambda and assigning x to 10. So that's why you have x to 10 here. So the result of the lambda is a closure that points to E1, okay? Because you may be wondering, the reason of this exercise is, okay, so if, we always, if we're always allocating, right, whenever we call, if you look at, let's look back at the rule for apply. The rule of apply is saying, whenever you call a function, you create a new environment. And you may be wondering, why do I need this environment, right? Why don't I just, uh, w will this environment ever be used? And the answer is yes, the environment might be used. And here is one example, right? The example is exactly that, is whenever you call a function, uh, let's look at the original program, which is this factory. When I create the factory, I initialize it with 10, I'm returning a lambda that captured 10. So the effect of that in this new semantics is that you are returning a closure with this new environment you created. Okay, and it appears here in the mutation, in the in the final heap. And that is why when you call a function, you need to propagate the, um, the changes by propagating the heap itself. So let's look slowly what's going on here. So when you call f of 10, what happens is you evaluate f. f is defined here. So you look up your, your environment e0, and it's defined there. So you return that e of 0, you get this, which is... Uh, a nicer notation for this whole ch thing, right? Closure e zero, and then lambda x, and then lambda y. Okay, and then you're you're gonna use this closure, and you're gonna pass it number ten. So we're gonna replace x by ten. Okay, I'm gonna replace this x right here. We don't find it. We don't replace the code itself. What we do is we create a new environment e one where x is assigned to ten. Right. That's the whole point of the the of the idea of it behind environments right so now what we return is this lambda y is going to be the body right this body so what we're returning is a lambda which when we evaluate we have to capture the closure or the environment in which it was called so this environment existed as a result from creating this um the environment that has the initialization of the parameter, right? Because what you're doing is f of 10. So what you need to do is you have to take the environment of the function f, right? And extend it with x equals one. And then you can ignore x, but in this case, we're not. So then the result is e1 assigned to lambda y that returns x. Okay, I hope this um, this exer exercise is interesting for you. Okay. Uh, and that's it. That's what I have for today. And then in the next video, I'm just going to go in more uh, practical details, showing you some examples of how to how to think about it and how to re how to solve this uh, homework assignment. But this homework assignment, if you've mastered uh, the homework assignment four, and you figured out that what Basically, the key point is that what you're learning is how to convert this slide into code. But the code is already given. The specification of the code is this slide. So the only difficulty is, can you understand how to write the code that represents this? So this should be one record line, this should be one record line, and so on. One line, one line, one line, one line, one line. And as you know, this will be, um, the expressions will be one function, and the terms will be another. So these two will be one and these four will be another function. Uh, so this function has three terms, uh, definition, sequence, and expressions. And this function has four terms, uh, or conditional with four branches, sorry. One branch, two branch, three branch, four branch. Um, yeah, so it's not complicated. It's actually, if you understood homework four, you should be able to do this in like 
30 minutes or an hour at most. Uh, but the problem is that some people don't really understand. They try to invent the code rather than trying to follow what is in the slides. And if you do that, then it becomes really complicated. Okay. And I hope you understood the examples. If you don't, please let me know. Can I, cause I can uh, help you out understanding these, this notation. Okay. Have a good weekend and goodbye.